Good morning, guys. Good to see you this morning. Good to be here. Thanks for letting me jump up here and pour out my heart this morning. Yeah, I think the last time I was here on a Sunday morning was right at New Year's, like two New Year's ago, I think. It was right before that. So, good deal. That song got, got in you, didn't it, Pastor Dave, when we were singing? I was ready to get up. I could have just went on right there. I was like, I was looking at them words, since your love got a hold of me. See, you have to understand the gospel in a way that reveals his love to your heart. And it's more than he died on the cross to forgive your sins so you can go to heaven. Because most people say, why? Why does he love me so much? Why does he want me in heaven? Like the way I grew up here in the gospel didn't convince my heart of his love. It actually caused a mystery and made me ask a lot of questions. Like nobody told me that he wanted to redeem my purpose, my potential, restore my value in him and come inside of me and shine through me and live through me and change my world from the inside. Nobody really went that far. They just said, you're going to sin. You need forgiven. He paid a price to forgive you. You make sure you receive him. Pray this prayer. So one day when he comes, your name will be written down. You can go with him. Well, you wouldn't have to be much of a believer to pray that prayer. You just say, okay, I hope he's right. Let's, what do we got to do? But that doesn't transform my life. That doesn't set me free from myself, anxiety, discouragement, despair, anger, frustration, unforgiveness. Thank you. We'll find out one day that's right. (laughs) I might find out right now. Yeah. Since your love got a hold of me. It's so important to preach the love of God to understand And see the love of God because you don't love God first. You see. Come on. You see that he first loved you. You don't love him first. You see that he first loved you. When you see the love of God, you begin to love him. If you don't see the love of God, you feel the need to serve him or you feel indebted to him or you believe you owe him. And that's never relational. That's servanthood. He called you friends. Are you with me? Come on, we're not here to do our duty. We're here to be one with him. We're here for him to live inside of us, to shine through us. Since your love got a hold of me, I'm a... That means I'm not the same. New perspective, new motive, new reason for being. Living from a new place, a new wellspring inside of me. New, not the same, new. I just don't have a new confession. I just don't have a new language. I didn't learn a language. I'm changed. I'm forever changed. I live from a different place than I've ever lived before. You with me? It's so important we get this, guys, because Jesus said that he's the light of the world. And before he left to go sit with the father, he said, you're the light of the world. So he said, tag, you're it. (laughs) Yeah, he's the light of the world. Now he says, you're my body. You're my people. So guess what? You're the light of the world. He says in Psalms, I believe it's 36. Correct me if I'm wrong. It might be 39, but I think it's 36. He says, in your light, we see light. So in him, we find the light. In him, we see the truth. In him, we find the way. Yay. Because before we saw him, we didn't know the way. We had a way. It's in him that we have life, right? It's in him that we have being. He said, you are The light of the world. That song, I'm a new creation. Do you know what Galatians 6 says? He says, circumcision, uncircumcision, it avails nothing but a new creation. It's not a prayer to get you in heaven. It's not just prayers to get your ducks in a row, your circumstances aligned, and your life rolling the way you hope it rolls. See, I travel. You have to understand. Yeah. Travel almost every weekend. 
And there's a general thought out there that's very strong. That God is here to make my life work. And you have countless discouraged people that go to church. And ask for prayer for their circumstances to change. And when they don't change, they get more discouraged. And somewhere along the line, we got this idea that he's here to serve me. Instead of transform me and live in me and shine through me in my life. Look, I, it's awesome if more finances come in the year 2019. But it's not wrong to pray for that stuff. What tends to be, I don't even like this word, but it's the word I got. Wrong, what tends to be wrong is when the finances coming or not decides how you're doing. And decides who you are. Sometimes we only pray for people because we want them to treat us the way we prefer. And our preference becomes Lord instead of love. In Him being the reason we are. You see what I'm saying? So then we pray for God to change a person instead of form Himself in me because my perspective isn't clear. So then how people are doing me determines how I'm doing. And now I'm a product of what I've been through instead of what he's been through. And life is deciding me instead of the giver of it. Are you with me? Come on, this stuff is so important because you're the light of the world. I'm looking at the light of the world. Whether you believe it or not, I believe it. I found it. You're the light of the world. He paid his life and shed his blood to put his spirit inside of you. You're the light of the world. You can talk yourself out of it all you want. One day you'll stand before him and realize you were de destined to be the light of the world. So anything that infringes and infringes on the light is a lie. So the whole reason you're alive in him and he's alive in you is for you to shine, not just prosper, not just to get your surface prayers answered. The whole reason you're alive is to shine, not to be treated right by others, to shine. Come on, Jesus proved that. He didn't get treated very well. And man, did he do good. Nobody ever done better. Totally pure. Completely perfect. We ain't never seen perfect till we seen him. And the Christ in you, the Christ in you is the hope of God's glory. Glory. Any made, seen, manifest attribute of God, any demonstration of who He is, is the glory of God revealed. The Christ in you is the hope of God being seen and known through your life. You're the light of the world. You can't say, well, you don't know what I've been going through. You don't know how it's been, brother. Stop deceiving yourself. That line of thought infringes on the light and makes it all about you while you're singing. It's all about Him. Did you ever see Jesus sitting on the Mount of Olives? Did you ever read the scripture where he's sitting there on the rock and he's discouraged? And Peter comes walking up to him and rubs his shoulder. Lord, what's the matter? Well, you know, I've been thinking, Peter. It just, it just doesn't seem fair. I mean, I'm doing good, right? I mean, I'm doing a lot of good. And I mean, you were there yesterday. You saw the healings. I mean... But God, he lets me hear their thoughts. I wish sometimes he didn't. Their, their thoughts aren't good. And I just, just, I just don't feel like they like me. I mean, I don't know how to get them to like me. They, 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 they come against everything I'm doing. I'm saying, today they're going to throng me. You know, I fed them the other day. I multiplied the food. They're tracking me down. I can tell they're tracking me down. They're going to show up. The only reason they're coming, Peter, is because they want me to feed them again. They could care less about what I'm saying. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm having a moment. I think I need prayer. Because I don't think people, John, John, come here. John, can I lay my head on you today? Please. Yes, just, just pray for me. Rub my hair, please. I love you too, John. Thank you. It's just one of them days. I just don't know if I even want to get out of bed. I don't even know if I want to go out in the streets. I don't, I don't want to be thronged today. That's thronging me. I got so much on my plate. I didn't even barely get started. And I got so much on my mind. 
Did anybody ever see Jesus do any of this? So then we didn't learn it from Him. Then where did we learn it? From living apart from Him. In the darkness. But you come out of the darkness into the light. Those mentalities that are normal to all of us never came from Him from the beginning. And He doesn't just want to make everything great for you circumstantially. He wants to go on the inside of you into your motives, your reason for being, your perspectives, your will, and transform you and bring you into agreement with Him. I'm going to be strong this morning. Anything less isn't what He paid for. And you can prove it by what anything less produces. Sustained animosity, discouragement, unforgiveness, issues, rightness. Well, he said, well, they shouldn't have. Well, if they didn't, I wouldn't be. Well, how come? We'll talk to them. You do not need a reason for not being like him. When you have every reason to follow him. He's the light of the world. See, I'm not a real, I'm not a real beginning of the year kind of thinker, but I, I realize that, and I've heard you say it several times. I'm not against it at all. I just, I see some. I live it. A day's a day to me. It's every day. It's, but I get this. This, this is coming into two nineteen. If you need to hear this and get fine tuned, be adjusted. Just get pulled out of something and in more to Him, and get tucked into an area where your soul is safe in Him. Well, then. Do that today, right before the turn of the year. And say, this coming year, man, I'm going to walk in the light as he's in the light. Not going to do, church. Going to be her. Done taking account of suffered wrongs. Done taking life personal. I'm going to take this love personal. I'm going to let it change me. Make me a new creation. Done with animosity. Done with the need to be right. Done with having to have the last word. Mm. Done with silent treatments in my marriage to convey my mood. That's called control and manipulation. It's called self-centered delusion. But we think it's new. You show me one time those things have ever produced life. You show me one time Jesus has ever come and received glory in those moments. See, you got to expose this thing or we get subtly seduced into thinking it's just who we have to be because it's who we are, because it's the way we are. And yet I hear these words say, follow me. Follow me. Come out of the darkness into the light. You guys all right? I hope so. Because <laughs> this is good news. So it's all in your perspective. It's all in you realizing, oh my goodness. See, see, when I preach this, it's, it just burns in my heart anymore. So like, can't you preach anything else? Actually, I could preach a whole lot of things not boasting. I could preach a whole lot of things. You pick a topic, I'm probably prepared more than you realize. I could just preach a whole lot of things. But when I stand up here, this stuff burns in me right here. It's like for the last two years, it's all I can see when I turn on a microphone. It's all that comes out of my mouth. It's all I can see. Because I believe in my conviction, it's what God's saying. It's not cool to come to church discouraged no matter what. Because if you're discouraged, you're not shining. So you've been tricked into the light, turned off. And nobody lights a lamp and then puts something over it that hinders it from shining. I think this is scriptural. I read these scriptures. I know they're in that book. He says the eye, the eye, the way you see, the eye, your perspective, your reason for being, your purpose in the day, your motivating factor, the why behind your life. Your eye is the lamp. It's the, it's the light, your eye of your body. And if you see clear, if your eye is single, not wide view lens, multiple choice. Yeah, but, well, if, but you don't know, brother, what it's been. Well, this is a tough season. Well, what's a tough season? Do 
doing constantly good and getting hammered for it? I heard a preacher say the other, I was at a place and this guy got up and shared it. It blessed me. I was like, what? He said, he said, I know you've been going through a hard time. He said, but did you ever do totally perfectly right and get crucified? He said, were you ever completely right, did everything right, and got crucified? Did you ever get stripped naked and get beat beyond description, get nails driven through you and get crucified for doing good? You probably ain't never been crucified. He said, well, yeah, but you don't know. I've been a hard road, brother. But see, you do yourself injustice because somebody else sitting here has had a hard road. And now we reduce ourselves to seeing who's been on the hardest road. So now we got to go through the room and share everybody's horror story, which tends to justify me, which excludes me from faith in him and his finished work. And all of a sudden I'm finding identity through who I've been and what I've been through instead of him and what he's been through. Not being insensitive, being sharp right now in the truth. Because if we go around and share each other's horror stories, the best we'll accomplish in this room is who's been through the most hell. And then we won't have an answer because it's all about the hell we've been through. And then we'll just sympathize with them and empower them to stay there when it's not them. You're not what you've done, what anyone's done to you. You're what he's done through his blood and through his body and through his cross. And it's time to let go, and I'm not being mean right now. You let go of thinking anybody owes you anything. You say, but I can't get over my dad. He just never, well, why don't you get over your dad? Stop letting him be Lord and decide who you are today. Stop letting him decide who you are today. Come on, if he knew who he was, he wouldn't have had that history with you. You ought to hurt for him, not hurt because of him. I promise you, Jesus didn't come to the earth because he was hurt by him. He said, forgive them, Father. They don't have a clue. They know not what they do. Man, I'm going with Jesus on this one. Why? Because he produces life. He brings light. Anything that infringes on the light is an enemy to your life. Any belief, any attitude, any mindset, any phrase you speak, anything that you justify the light not shining is a trap. How's that? You can go into this new year with barometers like that. If my attitude's not producing life, well, then it can't be the Lord. The last thing I need to do is be right when he lives in righteousness. It's time to make some wrong things right by seeing through it, seeing past it, seeing bigger than it. Man, if God came to you and me legalistic and he just called the shots, just think while we're worshiping, if God thought like we tend to think in our lives and all the people that we harbor and hold and remember and don't, I wonder if we're in worship. And he says, yeah, right, okay. And all of a sudden, he's bringing up your last three, four, five years. Well, the way you hurt me and the way you said you'll commit me, you went to seven order calls and you ain't even followed me for one day. You're just playing emotional games. Now you want to stand there and lift both your hands and worship me. Well, I ain't having it. Here he is, just so amazing. On your darkest day, even if it's your most willful day, even if it's your most deceived day, even if you don't even realize, he's like, you're so much more. I love you so much. You can be so much more. And he never changes his mind. And his love never, ever fails. Why? He doesn't slumber, so he didn't go to sleep. And he didn't wake up this morning. He's always awake. He's amazing. He never slumbers. That's amazing. But, but... But here's the deal. If he did wake up this morning, which he didn't, he's already away. He didn't start this day like we start a day for like focused on what you can do for him. He started this day loving you. Like, he's not self-centered. He wouldn't have made us the way he made us if he's self-centered. He just made a bunch of people robots with remotes and stuff. And kind of just digged himself and like... (laughs) He gave you a heart. He gave you a will. He gave you dominion on the earth. 
and said, it's up to you. What do you believe? Gave you authority in his name. Gave you his word. Gave you a sword, a breastplate, a helmet. Decked you out in some good shoes. He says, your call. What are you going to do with what I've done? Are you going to let life speak louder? Are you going to let life matter more than what matters most? Are you going to let me decide why you're here and manifest who I am for your life? You're the light of the world. Man, I got time. I just got scared. Did you see fear come all over me? I tried to push it off. It tried to get me. I felt fear. I said, I saw them zeros. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. That's why I, had, I said zeros. And then I glanced over and saw 1024. I said, whoa, I got time. I got excited. Now I'm excited. Some of you are like, oh, no. He's got 25 more minutes. You know what excites me? I'm not saying this in a weird way. What excites me is pastors and leaders send invites nonstop, year after year after year. I already have all next year's schedule. Stacks of invites, stacks of invites. doesn't even make sense to my mind. But it sets a barometer for me. It's a testimony. It tells me people are hungry. This message isn't, God's going to bless you. Pray for the new job. He'll give it to you. Maybe. It might be a want. It might be idolatry. You might not be ready to handle the finances. <laughs> He's a father. He didn't just give you away. He's not a genie. He's a father. And when you tone down on God because things didn't go the way you prayed, you reveal you're not covenant minded. You're needs driven. And you don't have a relationship. You're hoping he pulls through for your needs. It's not a relationship. When you're up and down with God like that, well, I don't know where we stand right now. I'm just, we're a little off right now. I'm just not talking. I'm just working, just sorting through. <laughs> Did I just slap? That's a glad it's a mystery person. I just slapped that person. <laughs> That's the first person I hit since I've been saved. <laughs> Man, I just slapped them. <laughs> they needed it, didn't they? <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It's a rough new year right now, buddy. We better back up. No, no, no. I'm just having fun with you. You know why we're laughing so it doesn't hurt. It's not supposed to hurt. Nobody's spanking you, cheering you on in the gift of life, cheering you on in the gift of purpose and destiny. You don't ever have to live aimless. You don't ever have to amble. Without communion with you, I'm unfulfilled. We sang this stuff this morning. I hope you pay attention. The songs that we sing nowadays are the best I've ever seen. They're intimate. They're powerful. They're truth-filled. Don't get used to the lyrics and just sing along. Without, I'm unfulfilled. Why? Without true co-union, co-union with you. I'm unfulfilled. Why? Because I'm not living in what I'm here for. Why would grace empower something outside of why you're here? Some of the stuff we pray for and need so bad, that would automatically flow if you were just walking in union with Him, walking in the light, just walking in love, walking in mercy. You, your whole prayer life would shift if you walk in the light and you refuse to take account of suffered wrongs and you protect the love of God through your life. You, you don't even have to pray about so many things. They just happen. Why? Oh, I can show you. Matthew 6. Matthew 6 is amazing. Isn't Matthew 6 awesome? Matthew 6 is good. Matthew 7 is amazing. 8 is 5. Whoa. Therefore, I say to you, it's verse 25. Don't, don't worry about your life. Come on, this is Jesus. <laughs> Matthew 6, verse 25. Don't worry about your life. What you will eat. Look, at, look up there on the, on the wall over there. That's where this thing's ending, right there. Seek first the kingdom of God and His 
Righteousness, that's the way he sees you, through righteousness. He rules his kingdom with a scepter of righteousness. He has dubbed you right in his sight through his blood that's speaking better things. So, so he, you kneel before him and give him your life. Oh my goodness. And he takes from you what was never yours and gives to you what was from the beginning, his life inside of you. It's called Christianity, little Christ-like ones. Yeah? Seek ye what? Not second. Not second. What? The kingdom of God. And how He sees us. How He's judged us. And you get so touched by that that you become the same expression of that. And you don't know how to hold men captive prisoner in your heart you don't know how to not forgive because you've been touched by the joy of forgiveness see i'm convinced in my heart this is my own belief system i'm qualifying that i'm convinced that people struggle with anger and unforgiveness have never truly received the forgiveness of god and stood clean in his presence because if you ever stand and understand you're vindicated and he sees you as if you've never sinned. You will cling to him. You will sit on his lap always. You will never stray away from that place. You are righteous in his sight. <laughs> People that have a hard time with forgiveness have never been touched by the beauty of being forgiven through the blood of Jesus. Even though they've asked for it and confessed it. Don't think that he forgave you just so you can walk around with the confession you're forgiven. He forgave you so you're so touched by being forgiven of everything you've ever done. You forgive every man anything they've ever done. Don't think that he gives you mercy just so you can walk around and say, I've obtained mercy. It's so you become merciful. I'm not being mean. Scripture says this in in Matthew 18, he says, anything less is an evil and wicked servant that's in it for what they can get from him instead of how they can become like him. <laughs> Thank you. I needed that one right there. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> it's quiet. Don't get quiet, quiet in a bad way. Listen, it's scriptural. It shows me the intention of God in sending his son. And it's not to fill my vats and barns. It's to fill me with his spirit. So that whether I have enough, like Paul said, or don't, I'm the same. He gets to one point where he says, Holy Spirit says, every city I'm heading, chains and prisons are waiting me here for, for me there. But he said, none of these things are moving me because I don't count my own life dear. <gasps> Come on, guys. <laughs> If we knew change in prison were waiting, we'd be having debriefing meetings, leader meetings. We'd be talking about using wisdom. <laughs> till the season changes, till the seas settle, till it's safe. If Jesus told you to stop your car and go tell that guy with the cut-off sleeves that has arms as big as your legs that I love him, but when you tell him that, he's going to punch you square in the mouth. Most of us would intercede from the car or say, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> but what would happen if you walk up to him, park the car and say, hey, man, what do you want? I just want to tell you, man, Jesus really, really loves you. Man, what? Get away. He does, man. Bam. Poof. He still loves you, man. Bless you. Hope your day's amazing. And you get in your car and drive away. I wonder if God would tell us to do that. We'd be thinking that couldn't be God. Because he's out for my physical well-being. <laughs> you guys all right? <laughs> I guess I'm trying to head somewhere. We'll read this. 10.33. Mm -mm -mm. Time's moving slow, man. I like it. The Lord must be happy. He just, that's a slow moving clock. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Don't 
Don't worry about your life. <laughs> what you're going to eat. What you're going to drink. Nor your body. What you're going to put on. Now watch this. Don't miss this stuff. This stuff is so powerful. Watch what he says. Jesus, red letters. He's asking a question. We probably ought to come up with an answer. Look what he says. Here's why I'm saying this, because I travel a lot. And there's a strong general mindset in the body of Christ that the reason we're Christians is to make it. So the gospel gets reduced to a survival kit. And then men are only doing as good as it's going. And the light is quenched constantly. And we have our confessions, our face sheets, and our stuff all over the fridge. And when you read it all and quote it all, it normally pertains to your day working the way you would write it. And watch, that has nothing to do with why he's in you. Nothing. But that's the strong push everywhere I go. It's the general mindset that we've, as leaders and pastors... Painted, talking to people about all their blessings, provision, breakthrough, promises. We got people hoping for something good from the Lord. What beats forgiveness for everything you've ever done? His life inside of you, never ever changing his mind, leaving you or forsaking you, and empowering you with everlasting life. What gets better than that? The reason he did that is so you can shine, not have better circumstances. So that you can shine when things aren't going the way you would write. See, we don't, we don't appreciate this kind of message a lot of times because we always want to believe that it's just about God working everything out. Look, you try to tell that to Shadrach and those boys. He did not put the fire out. He didn't put it out. It's not about your circumstance always changing. It's about you never letting your circumstance change you because you're already settled and established and rooted and grounded in love. That story fascinates me the more I look at it. They, it's one of my favorites. Hey, the, the decree was so urgent. The fire was so raging. That thing was so hot. You know what happened. When they opened the door, when his servants, the king's two servants opened the door, what happened? The fire, the heat consumed them boys. Toasty bacon, poof, done. You got three Hebrew boys bound and tied standing at the door. The guys that are going to throw them in are already dead. How'd they even get in there? I bet you, Jesus, just give them one. Go ahead, boys. We're going to have fun. You're believing right. I'm thinking an angel of the Lord came and took the wings. Whoosh! <laughs> Ain't this awesome? Woo! Because it wasn't about life or death. It wasn't about my convenience. It was about who is Lord and I ain't changing my mind. And whether I live or whether I die, it's unto the Lord. And I ain't bowing to you, Nebuchadnezzar, because you are not my king. So, all of a sudden, the fire that burns every man on the planet, Old Covenant, Old Testament, has no power to burn the men that believe. That's fascinating. You want to talk about supernatural? Right there it is. You want to talk about supernatural power, doing miracles and stuff? Right there. Unwavering, unshakable. Don't change your mind. Never make it about you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Whether I live, whether I die, it's under the Lord. That's where he intervenes. Fear is never the answer. Fear in that fire, we have a different story. You have zero authority over what you fear. And you reduce this to a book of principles you're hoping works in your dilemma. And you quote and quote and quote because you're pushing. Because you're afraid. When you have fear, your prayers are different. And a lot of times, if we really get humble, 
our prayer lives reveal the fear. We look with our eyes, think with our mind. Oh, Lord. And we call it prayer. Instead of speaking to the mountain, declaring, decreeing. Looking at your child that you see all the symptoms. You just read two articles and now your heart's pounding. Now you're symptom sensitive. And when they come home, your disposition's different. You're on edge. You're in your room crying all night. And you're calling in faith. Instead of God, I thank you. You women, I'm telling you, you women, you can do this. I've been around some amazing women. You just say, no way. You get in your bedroom. Did you not give me the grace to conceive that child? Do you not have a destiny for his life? I thank you, Father, that he and ha and her and ha and ha. And you come out of that bedroom, and guess what you're doing? You're shining. You don't become a product of where your son isn't and call it love. Well, I'm just praying for my boy. I just love my boy. No, he's probably become an idol in your life, and he's probably dictating your identity. I'm sorry. I'm just bringing it straight. I've seen it too much, and I know it's right on. I've seen good people get subtly deceived in this stuff because it's so close to home. And when you lose your productivity, you're looking through wrong eyes. When the light turns off in your go through, you're being deceived. There ain't no person on the earth going to stand before the Lord in that day. We don't even know what that's going to be like. We, we kind of reminisce, joke about it, make It's going to be ridiculous standing before the Lord. You ever been overwhelmed by God when you're alone? You've been in your bedroom and you think you visited with the Lord. I can tell you many times. Don't even know what to do. And it ain't nothing like it. That's a glimmer of who he is in my life. Can you imagine? Just can you imagine? Dave Miller. Angel calls him. He comes over. Oh, why not? What are you gonna do? <laughs> One of you folks that think you have trouble, you're gonna get called in before him, and you let your whole life be lived in all the years of blessing and gifting and purpose and gift called life get deceived away by people and individuals, and you say, "Well, if God would have changed my spouse." I'd have been a lot better if God would have done something with my wife. You don't know how trying it was. A man can only take so much, brother. You try to explain that to Jesus who loved the whole world with his life. You try to sell Jesus that. When he said, follow me, I made you after me in my image so you can follow me. I've even done one better. I've given you my spirit. And you're going to stand before him on that day and look into his liquidy eyes of love and fire and be overwhelmed. And, and the total essence of truth and light. And there's no deception that will that'll be even possibly be able to remain. And you're going to go, oh! And you think you're going to go, uh, uh. Like, like, like the Wizard of Oz, the lion and the, and the Oz head. You know, he's like, well, blah, 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 blah. You, no, no, no. You're, you think you're going to go, uh, you know... I'd have done so much better if it wasn't for my wife. You're going to go, oops. Man, was I deceived. I let where she wasn't decide where I am. I let what she didn't see decide what I do see, and you're the light of the world. Boy, I sure see it now. Duh. Come on, if it's not going to work then, why would you let it work now? Why would you find two people that agree that are going through the same stuff and call it support? Oh, I came to preach the gospel. (laughs) Why would you do that? Why, Why would you gather yourself around yourself? People that understand your pain and call it sensitive. 
We don't realize what we're doing. It's all self-centered, self-focused, and it all robs the light. And the whole reason you and I are on the planet and he's in us is so we shine before men. Let your light so. So anything that comes against the light is a lie. You say, brother, you don't know how long ongoing my symptoms in our body, health stuff. I get it. Listen, I've walked. I've walked in such a fun place for a long, long time. I've seen miracles in my life. I've seen God. I don't get head colds. I don't usually talk about this stuff, but there's a reason I am. I don't get stuffy noses. I don't get stuff. I don't have a season for flu. Now, I have a season for pheasants. I got to the other day, but I don't have a season for flu. I don't know about the common cold. And I haven't. Well, brother, you have a. You have a, a, what do people, divine healing revelation. No, no, it's just covenant. You're just, you're in the world. You're not of the world. You're just not afraid. You're not self-centered. You're not consumed with data and information and natural knowledge that produces fear and worry. And then you turn it into prayer. Nope, I just happen to believe I'm in the world, not of it. I just happen to believe, so I don't have pains and stuff, and I don't have stuff. Went through some witchcraft years ago, and Jesus smote that, and and I've just been living in a certain place. Two times in my life, I've torn my knee and, and watched God supernaturally fix it. And the one time was right after they took the MRI, said it was torn, and I needed surgery and five months rehab, and he fixed it on the couch. You, you say, what's wrong with you? That kind of stuff. You're laying on your couch and just thanking him and you're weeping. And all of a sudden he just comes down and and you stand up and you couldn't even use your leg. And you just stand up and you can walk. And the MRI says it's tore. So see, when you have some results like that, I remember running down Zarfoss Road one day. Man, I'm just going, I'm down the road. I felt this pop in my knee. And I pulled up like a lame horse. And I'll never forget it. I said, knee, you will work. You've been given to me by God. You're part of my body. You will run. You will bend. You will flex. You have no choice in Jesus' name. And then I ran as hard as I can run. Now, I'm not telling you to do that. I did that. I'm not telling you to do that. But I see that. I took off running. Them first two steps were like, dear Jesus. And that third step was like, yay, God. And that fourth step was, and then by the sixth, seventh step, it was like a Rocky movie. It was like, whole way home. So right around Thanksgiving, I did something to my knee when I was hunting. And it doubled back on me, hyperextended, whatever you want to. There's a million things they can tell me. I'm just not in that place. So the next day I was really hurting, but I wanted to go out again because I was home and I thought hunting season about over. I'm going to go out. My boy has a, and his wife have a neat doggy and I'm having fun with her. She's my little buddy and we hunt together. So we took off hunting and I could hardly walk. But I went hunting now. Probably should have rested. I don't believe I was foolish. I just keep moving forward. This thing was hurting me and hurting me and hurting me. It went on for weeks. Now you think, well, well, why? See, you don't understand. There's challenges in everything, guys. When you see things supernaturally healed in your life and you don't have any troubles and all of a sudden you have something that won't go away even though it's just the knee that tries to get in your head. Well, how come? Well, why change? What it? And I've been around us a lot. I've pastored. I've counseled. And all of a sudden you get so many questions that you let go of what you already know. And it becomes about you, what you're going through, what it's costing you, and now where and if I and how come and what's different about and why. And I've learned to ask none of the above. Every day I wake up, he loves me. It's ridiculous. He loves me. He lives in me. He loves to live in me. He came. It was his idea. He came to me. I didn't write him. 
He knew me. I had no clue who I was. He knew me. And he's been wanting to live in me a long time. And he's finally here. Probably ought to just let him be here. My knee in the last week and a half has slowly been getting better and better. And right now, today, honestly, right now, feels as good as it has felt by far. And, 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 but it wasn't one of those, bam, like I'm always used to. I mean, I've had, I've had fun with Jesus. But this thing seemed to linger. But you don't let it ask you a question. That crosses over what you know. So if you don't settle what you know. You'll always be driven by questions. And if you always have questions. When are you ever rooted and grounded in love. And living by faith. Are you with me? I got off on a little bit of a thing there. But I hope that's okay. Man, I feel good right now on my knee. You say, well, yeah, but that's because you're up there preaching under the anointing. Well, I've read my Bible. I'm always anointed. You can't talk me out of it. I'm always anointed. You don't have to work it up. You believe it. He's in you. And he is one bad, bad dude. I mean, he's, Jesus is amazing. I was in the service a couple of weeks ago. My knee was bothering me so bad. I was preaching. And my knee was bothering me so bad. While I was preaching. This stuff tries to get in your head. Satan comes. He looks for opportune time. So at that time, he said, well, how come? Well, I wonder what? Well, if it's the presence of God, then how come? Well, we'll stand in his presence. Well, that mustn't even be the presence of God. Well, blah, blah. Stupid, stupid voices. I can call the devil stupid. Trouble is, we make him wise because we believe him. I just threw all that junk away. I was preaching and I said something about the word of God and about Jesus coming and the sword out of his mouth. Who's ever had the presence of God just envelop them and just come down over them and just kind of set on them? I was preaching and it was like, whew, it was good. But there was that knee just hurting me so bad. <laughs> I'd be in healing services, pray for people and see them healed. I'd go pray for my mom and nothing would change. You better be settled on what you know or those questions will keep you in a quandary. You better lock in on truth because truth makes you free, not questions. And all of a sudden you take that personal because she's your mom and that's a close relationship. And now you got real issues. Don't know what you believe because you're hurt. And disappointed with the gospel. Because it didn't give you what you. You be careful. That's not relational. Don't reduce him to something he's not. He's your father. And he loves you. And he wants to live in you. And he paid a price to shine through you. He tells us to walk in a manner worthy. He tells us not to just consider our own bodies and what we're going to eat and drink because isn't life more than these? Isn't that what he says? That's incredible. Listen, we can, we can live this or he wouldn't have called us to it. If you couldn't follow him by the Spirit of God and if grace wasn't enough, he wouldn't say, follow me. So what does follow him mean? Does it just mean miracles, signs, and wonders? That's what we drift into. Following him means follow his person, his attitudes, his motives, his love. When we say your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, why do we always make it the supernatural? Why is that always the power of God? It is, but it's not only the power of God. We say, and it's not wrong, we say no cancer in heaven. No cancer on the earth. And it gives us faith to come against the thing that's trying to. Right? Because bound is bound. Loosed is loosed. And we get all that. Right? Well, watch this. Your will be done on as it is in no animosity, no hurt, no discouragement, no jealousy, no bitterness. None of that in heaven. 
Your will be done on. See, it's amazing how we shift everything into the power of God when it's all about the heart of God. Because everything that he does flows out of the beauty of who he is. And he wants that to be the first work in us through our first love. You get it? So it's not enough to see a miracle in your life. It's enough to follow him and become more like him. It's not enough to get a word of knowledge and then be maybe tricked into finding your identity through the fact that God used you and ride a little spiritual wave. It's only enough to not get offended and to not change your mind and look through the eyes that he always sees through. Are you with me? So coming into this year of 2019, which is a reality, it's the calendar shift, and man, it's a new year. We relate to that. We, beginning of a new year. I'm going to pray over all of us and just ask for grace. Please join me in that. And, and if you're agreeing in your heart with everything you're hearing, and even if you're only agreeing with some of it, take it to the Lord when I pray. And thank Him. Don't even ask Him. Thank Him for the grace sufficient to walk in what He paid for. But here's what I need. I need us as the body to say we're willing. And we wonder, this isn't about a big altar call and everybody coming up saying, yeah, you can do it right. We learn to live with Him. Learn to be with Him. Learn to have union and communion with Him. You don't have to connect with Him at an altar. You connect with Him from your heart right now. You get it? It's important. And if you've had animosity in your home, if it hasn't been going good between hubby and wife, man, somebody make a move and be humble. If you elbowed your spouse, I'm already talking to you. And you haven't even heard me today. If you elbowed your spouse, you heard me for them, which means you're still trapped in self-centeredness. And you're expecting them to live a certain way so you're okay. That's all idolatry. It's deception. You're letting your life be determined by one person. And the unfortunate thing is their name isn't Jesus. So if one person is going to decide who you are and how you are, you probably ought to let it be him. So I'm going to pray. And even if you're married and even if that's been the case, man, I promise you, I'll see this everywhere I go. You be humble and you take the hand of your spouse when we pray and you just squeeze their hand. Don't even say nothing because sometimes we get words get in the way and looks and. You just, you just squeeze their hand, and when you squeeze their hand, what you're saying is, you know, I, I want to live this message, and I just release you, and I love you, and forgive me. But I, I want, I'm, I'm praying this with this man, and I'm just letting you know where I stand. And the best thing you could do is not pull your hand away or harden your heart or go, here we go again. The best thing you could do is squeeze their hand back and say, you know what, let's start this year together, and let's go after him. Not well-being, him. Because if we go after him, we will have well-being. Are you with me? Father, we just thank you right now for grace. We thank you for truth. We just ask right now for grace in our lives to be more and more like you, that the light would shine, that you, Holy Spirit, would come and expose everything that tries to hinder the light, everything that would try to quench the light. Holy Spirit, we're asking you to reveal those things that a week wouldn't go by, a month in a mindset that's non-productive, that immediately you would just... Touch us, shake us, whatever you need to do, but get our attention so that we walk in this purpose without works, without trying so hard. Just help us become what our hearts are crying for as we hear this truth. And Father, I thank you right now for grace over these people. I pray for healing and wholeness in marriages. In this year coming up, I pray for fresh starts, new starts, amazing starts. I pray for reconciliation and restoration in home fronts. I pray for marriages to be strong. That this would be a year of, of not just strong marriages, but renewed and restored marriages. That individuals in a marriage would take hold of you, God, and, and, and take initiative and start becoming love instead of just needing and demanding it. Lord God, I thank you for shift and change. And I thank you that your kingdom come and your will be done right here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? i got about three minutes. That's it. we got to transition. But I want to do something quick. It's important. And, and uh, we'll just do it. We can do it. This isn't religious, I promise you. And it won't be without effect if we stay humble and sincere and participate. If you're sick in your body and you need healing in this place, just stay sitting. Just raise your hand. If you need some form of healing in your body, raise your hand right where you're at. <clears throat> 
Somebody sitting right beside them. You don't have to go too far, but somebody behind them and turn around, look, just grab their hand, get their hand. Don't be all, don't smother them. Just get their hand and say, hey, I'm going to hold your hand and believe. Now listen, I don't want you praying some big, long thing. I just want you to say, be whole and be healed in Jesus' name. Believing His love through the cross. Believing His finished work through the blood. Go ahead, pray for them right now. Father, I thank You for healing all through this place. I thank You, God, You make people whole. I thank You that You take every sickness and every disease out of people right now in the authority of Jesus' name. Every sickness and every disease leave. Bodies be completely whole. People be healed through the love of God and the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. If you're being prayed for, thank him right now that he loves you. That whatever it is you've been going through is no reflection on the lack of love or whatever. He loves you because he sent his son. Settle on it. Don't let questions change what you're called to already know. Thank him right now that he loves you. Father, I thank you for healing. I thank you. Bodies respond. I thank you even this day, this day, that people say, wow, you changed that thing in me. Thank you, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Okay. I love you guys. Do I need to, you need to close or? You, we good? Okay. Hey, I'm just authority. Love you. Good to see you. Thanks for being here and thanks for listening. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Have an amazing day.